Okay then guys, auto CAD tutorial time again. And as you can see, um, drawing staircases again. Now this stir, or this balustrade to the staircase, um, has just been put on and this morning I've been to site um, and I've checked positions so that I can draw out the glass in fill panels. Um, it doesn't have to be glass, it can be perforated panels or anything like that. Um, it's the same sort of thing at the end of the day. Um, if it's a concrete stir like, like this is, it's always beneficial to head over to site and, and do your, your site checks before you do the infills because otherwise it won't fit. The reason for that being is that the precast concrete stir has been made by somebody else and it's been put in. Um, you can sort of guarantee it's never square. If it had been a steel stir case and we'd have made it in the shop, then I probably wouldn't have gone to site because we've done everything ourselves um, so we will have made it square or we would have made the bolster square to the staircase anyway like I said for um, sake of an hour or two hours on site just checking some dimensions this pays dividends this does okay so from my general arrangement before I go to site I just copy it up there and I throw some dimensions over the bolsters, pins, top rails, if you like, um, so that I can tick off the ones that are right and I can rewrite in the dimensions that are wrong. Which, if you can hear that, are the sheets of paper in front of me that are printed off and I have got my sight sizes on. So, right, all that's done, so off we go, guys. So, first of all, let's turn a couple of layers off, or turn one off. It's actually the bolts layer. Why the bolts layer? To be honest with you, I don't know. Don't know why I put it on bolts, but I did do. So let's copy the bits I need. So from there, I'll just copy that up to there and get rid of that and we'll put the bolts layer back on. So as you can see, I hit it before, dragged it up and everything's back on there now. Okay, let me just draw that in there just to right so there we go right what I need to do now is I need to get rid of a couple more things trim a couple more things out what I don't need That's what I want, so I'll just copy it to, to one side just in case I've got to copy anything back um, and then get rid of everything else which I'm not going to need at the moment. Uh, so don't need that, don't need that, don't need that, don't need that, 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 that. So here we go. First dimension that I've taken on site is from that pin to that pin, and the second one I've taken is from that pin to that pin. So I've got to draw a triangle in there using these two pins to a point over here. So I will go about doing that. Is the first dimension is 795. So from the centre of there, I draw a circle with a radius of 795 draw an intersecting circle from there with a radius of 740 these sizes which I'm telling you guys are off my site survey then I move 
the bottom ball step from that point there to that point there. Um, there we have it, that's in. Right, move on to the next ball step up. So from that pin there to that pin there is 807 millimeters. So I draw a circle of 807. And from that pin there to that pin there is 715. Five. You may be wondering why you, well, let me just move these first of all. There we go. You may be wondering why I'm not checking these. Well I have done and they are all correct. The bolsters are correct. So it's just the positions of them that I'm actually interested in at the moment. So let's do the next bolster. So from that pin there to that pin there is a 800 millimeters. Draw that one in of 800, and then from that pin there to that pin there is 706. So I'll draw another intersecting circle in there of 706 millimeters, and then move them three so that they are in the right position, and then do it with the uh, last bolster. So from that pin there to that pin there is. 868, so we'll draw a circle of 868, 868, and then from that pin there to that pin there is 710, so I'll do that as well, so we'll 10. and then I can move that, so from there to there. Right, now that is all of the bolsters set out into the positions. Now I've got to draw in the top rail and the nosing line. So I've got them as well. Let's get rid of that. So, so from the center to the nosing is 128. That's 128. Put that on to reference. Okay, um, the second one down is 139, so that's 139. The next one is 140, that's 140. The next one is 139, 139, and the last one is. 150 but that's not a nosing that's back to the bottom right so that's 150 now I know because when I measured this on site that that is the bottom right so I'll just copy that from there and my phone's going off so um, just turn it off a minute there we go right what I need to do now is draw in the nosing line so the nosing line is from there to there and then I can trim that. Sorry about that guys, with the phone going off. It's been demounted under another measure up somewhere. Right, so that's the nosing line. Let's pick a different um, layer for that. Centre layer there. Okay, now I suppose you can see that it doesn't quite hit them points there, but I'm not too bothered with it. Too bothered at all. Right, then I want to draw in the top rail, so I'll go from that point there to that point there. As you can see, it's slightly out, but you know, not that much that makes any difference. Um, that's not quite in the right place either. So, all I'm going to do with that is stretch that over to there, delete that, and then make sure that I've got this. So I took a dimension from the centre of there to the centre of there of 250mm, so let's just see what I've got there, 232, so if I go up like that and then draw a line 250. And then I can stretch that from the perpendicular to 
there. So that is in the right place as well. Um, I'm just going to chamfer that line into that one. So that's indicating the underside of the top rail. Now looking at the um, general arrangement down 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 here I've got offsets on here around my glass so from the underside of the tube to the top of the glass is 75 and from the nose in to the glass is 40 millimeters so I'm going to put them in next so let's offset these 75 uh, offset that 40 Okay, and then what I do is I use the chamfer. You can use the stretch and trim if you want, but I do this. It's a bit long winded, but at least I know that I'm getting corners that the lines meet. Okay. And then the same with the bottom. What I should possibly have done as well is change that bottom line to grey because that indicates that it's glazing. So I'll do that in a minute. Now the other thing guys is depending on where about you're viewing this, this is um, the good old United Kingdom. So I'm sticking to building regulations for this neck of the wood. If you're in America or Canada or wherever the hell you're from, you've got to use your building regulations guys. And then what I do then is I trim to the edges. So I'm getting the last panels here. It's more like it, doesn't it? More like a proper job. see at the bottom here guys that gap there is probably more than 100 millimeters but because it's at the bottom of the stern there's no significant fall it doesn't matter right so the last bit between there and there. right guys so that is it that is how I draw my glass panels all I need to do now is to give each one of them a number G1, G2, G3, G4, copy them over onto a drawing sheet, now I mention them up, send them off to the glazer, job's done. Okay guys, hope that was of help to you, and I'll see you again soon. Right, I'll go and see who phoned me up then. Bye now.